Welcome to the party, pal. Your friendly neighborhood, Master Chaos, back with you one more time to go over the Sunday, July 26, 2020 Comic-Con at Home schedule. I hope you guys have your pens and pads out so you can note what panels you want to go to, or you can just follow the link that I'll provide in the description and make sure you check the panels that interest you below. Again, if you haven't seen the other ones, I'm not going to read everything uh, for brevity's sake. But I will sort of highlight panels that sound interesting to me and may also appeal to yourself. So here we go. This is uh, it's not going to be a full day. I believe it goes until 4 p.m. So uh, let's see what we have on the docket for the final day of Comic-Con at Home starting at 10 a.m. Nothing jumps out at me in the beginning here except for... The 30th anniversary of the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Celebrating the 30th anniversary of the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie presents a bit of history. Uh, oh, I see. So that's the name of the panel. Presents a bit of history of, uh, of the making of the iconic film with the panel guest producer, Kim Dawson, the writer and ex Ofico? What the heck does that mean? Ofiso? Producer Bobby Herbeck? and moderated by the Old Turtle Den's creator, Chris Castaneda. Okay, well, that's not going to be as interesting. And I don't know who the heck wrote that, but I don't know what an ex ofico means. Um, that doesn't sound as interesting. I thought the cast would be there or something, but eh, that actually might be a pass from me, even though I selected it. But if it uh, floats your boat, go ahead. 11 a.m., I wanted to highlight this show. Next, it stars a friend of mine. This is going to be a new show coming to Fox. And my friend Fernanda is one of the stars of the show. Coming to Fox in fall 2020, next arrives at Comic-Con at Home with a sneak peek of the thrilling opening scene of the propulsive, fact-based thriller about the emergence of a deadly, rogue, artificial intelligence that combines pulse-pounding action with an examination of how technology is invading our lives and transforming us in ways we don't yet understand. Next stars John Slattery as a Silicon Valley pioneer who teams with cybercrime agent Fernanda Andrade, to fight a villain unlike anything we've ever seen. I'm so excited for Fernanda. This is a big deal. Um, it's put together, executive produced by Manny Cotto, who did 24. I'm a big 24 fan. AI stuff is is all the rage now, and it's always scary. So I'm excited to see this show, and I recommend you guys check it out. That's going to be at 11 a.m. Next, 12 PM. What do we have here? Well, obviously the Bronies panel at the top here, that, that caught my eye, but let's skip it and go to Comic-Con Film School. I think we can all benefit from that. This is a nuts and bolts class on how to make a movie for very little money using available video hardware and software. Whether you're shooting your first Fortnite fan film or that story about the leather-clad girl who hunts vampires, this course will take you from script to final product so that you too can enter your movie uh, your own movie into the CCIIFF, which is uh, the Comic-Con International uh, Film Festival. And uh, there's a lot of uh, panel guests here. i um, trying to uh, see if anybody jumps out at me. It's like, oh, I know who that person is. I don't know their work. But anyway, those guests will be there, and this is sort of a primer in terms of uh, filmmaking. I think a lot of people would get a... Kick out of that. 1 p.m. What do we got at 1 p.m.? We got Looney Tunes cartoons, a Kevin Eastman panel, and then one of my favorite sitcoms of all time. It is hands down hilarious. The Goldbergs. The long running and successful The Goldbergs is returning to ABC for a highly anticipated eighth season. The stars of the show will be joined by executive producers and the moderator Gerard Hall of Entertainment Weekly to celebrate seven seasons of America's favorite 1980-something family, along with a discussion about the upcoming season with a few surprises along the way. I am stoked for that. If you guys have never seen Goldberg's, I highly recommend it. So funny. Uh, at the end here, uh, right before we get to 2 p.m., writing for TV from first draft to getting staffed. Again, this is sort of a nuts and bolts panel. I thought people would find this interesting. I certainly do. Uh, moderated by Spiro Skentzos uh, from Arrow, along with Bob Goodman from Elementary, and it looks like a couple of other people. And Leticia Baylor, who's a manager of scripted content for NBC, NBC Universal, 
They discuss navigating the TV spec terrain, including beginner's mistakes, what they look for in a writer, and what it takes for you to write a killer spec that will stand above the crowd. That will be very interesting to hear. I think a lot of people would benefit from that panel. 2 p.m., we got a conversation with Nathan Fillion, uh, inspired by real life, two stories behind graphic novels. Nothing really jumped out at me. Robotech, the next phase. Moving on to 3 p.m., uh, how to create your own novel from uh, first idea to publishing and what you need to sell your work into TV and film. I, I think I, I think some people could benefit from that. The art of film and TV posters. Let me check on that. Actually, I didn't uh, originally select that, but let me see what that is. Uh, Asifa Hollywood and famed illustrators who have worked on entertainment art for the last 50 years will discuss their craft and what inspired them to pick up the baton and follow in the footsteps of their mentors. So it looks like we have uh, a ton of artists here. It says Robert Rodriguez, Jewel of the Nile. I doubt that that's the Robert Rodriguez that we're all thinking about. Oh, William Stout, he's great. He's a great artist. Um, looks like uh, a lot of... Oh, Drew Struzan will be here as well. Oh, amazing. So basically poster artists talking poster art. That sounds phenomenal. Most of us buy movies nowadays just based on the slipcase artwork. Uh, here we go. 4 p.m. is the last window of time. We're going to look at Christmas in July, the psychology of pop culture and Christmas. I don't know. That just sounded interesting to me. I don't know why they would have a whole panel about that, but let's see what they got. Well, there's a lot of text here. It may be July, but Christmas is in the air. People love the holidays and have fond memories of various Christmas media from watching a Charlie Brown Christmas to listening to All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey to debating whether The Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween or Christmas movie. It's a Halloween movie. Christmas movies and television shows come from every genre, such as horror, science fiction, uh, anyone remember the Star Wars holiday special, to classic stories with Santa Claus. Christmas media is so popular that some television and radio stations run Christmas marathons and specials 24 hours a day during December. What are the psychological aspects about our personality that influence returning year after year, that influence returning year after year to those favorite holiday classics and the desire to experience new Christmas media. Sorry, I tripped up there because the, the, the wording was odd. So join a panel of psychologists um, uh, who looks like they conduct a national survey to identify what are people's favorite Christmas movies, TV shows, and sing-along, and then examine the participants' personalities as well as their blue. Ah, that doesn't sound that interesting. Sorry about that. I'm going to pass on that one. That just, That sounds really... Pointless. Uh, people love Christmas. Uh, they, should, they shouldn't be analyzed. That seems kind of goofy. Um, the last three panels here, folks. Indie Filmmakers Survival Guide. Struggling to get a movie made goes with the territory for independent filmmakers. So how do filmmakers survive and make movies with the world on lockdown? Join Chris Gore. Oh, I love Chris. He's a friend of mine. Alex Ferrari, Tara Wood, Charlie Band. Oh, my God. Full Moon Entertainment and Robert Meyer Burnett for a conversation about great independent films on VOD and how indies can thrive during these challenging times. Now that sounds phenomenal. I, I, I think that's a definite must-watch. Great, great list of uh, panelists right there. Uh, let's see. Ray Bradbury goes to Hollywood. That's the one that jumped out at me next. I think a lot of people would enjoy knowing about that. You've heard of him as a writer, but did you know Ray Bradbury has a successful career in film and television? Orton Ortwin of the Ray Bradbury Experience Museum We'll talk about Ray's career in Hollywood, from his boyhood hounding of Golden Age actors for autographs to his career as a screenwriter. Even avid fans will learn something new. John Huston, Leonard Nimoy, and Ray Harryhausen are just a few of the names to make a cameo. I know he wrote Moby Dick for John Huston, and uh, he talks about it a lot in uh, one of his books. I forget which. Uh, I think it was Zen and the Art of Screenwriting. The Zen, Zen and the Art of Writing, I believe. I think that's, his, I think that's the title of this book. He, he speaks about uh, working with John Houston and how interesting and difficult that was. Anyway, uh, last but not least, uh, the grind it never stops, not even during a quarantine. This is a panel video to get you energized and ready to rise and grind. There's no better time than now to get yourself in the best position to produce creative work. The pandemic is no excuse. It is actually the catalyst to work even harder. Brian Tillman, a longtime panelist at San Diego Comic-Con, best known for his proper pitching and promoting yourself panel, is giving you tips on how to crush your time during this pandemic. Now's the time to get to the grind with these tips and tricks. You will be well on your way to developing a fantastic project to show at Comic-Con 2021. 
I love that. That is uh, that is the way to go. That is a nice final panel for Comic Con at home. It ends at 5 p.m. and then the con is put to bed. I assume the rest of these uh, panels are going to be available online if you miss them live, you know, or I guess some of them have been pre-taped, but they will be available to rewatch down the road. So if you find something at a different time that you wanted to watch, but you, you know, sacrificed it to watch something else, you'll be able to catch up with all those panels. I doubt they're going to pull them uh, from the whatever YouTube channel that it's going to be happening on. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they will keep all that up. Now, Comic-Con at Home is far from just the panel. I'd like to, if possible, give you more information on okay these are just people who are attending i'm trying to find a window that tells me how to download or where to find the link you know what it's not here because this is my schedule page so this only tells me the panels so here's what i'm going to do in the description below I'm also going to put a link to how you can watch Comic Con at Home. Make sure you don't miss it. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a good time. I certainly did talking Comic Con and taking a look at the Sunday schedule for Comic Con at Home. I'm going to miss being there, but we're all safe and sound at home. And I hope this video finds you safe and sound, happy, healthy, and well. Thank you for joining the party. I'll see you tomorrow. This has been your friendly neighborhood, Master Chaos, signing off.